Homage to the Buddha and then the homage to Lord Manjushri and my Lord Maitreya and then Arya Nagarjun. These are the verses that come in the beginning of the Lamrim, the concise Lamrim by Master Tsongkhapa. to the lineage masters of the, I think, Jataka team. Basically, we also come across the lamas in the Lamrim teaching. So we are going to the a series of his holiness the Dalai Lamas, the first Kindin troops, Sin, second is Kindin Gyatso, third Sunam Gyatso, and then the fourth Yendin Gyatso. Then the fifth Lama San Gyatso. And then the sixth the the seventh Ninth is 
<laughs> to the Buddha Dharma and the Supreme Assembly, I seek refuge until enlightenment is attained. By listening to this teaching, may I become a Buddha for the benefit of all sentient, sentient beings. So this is the verse that is being recited three times. To the Buddha, Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly, I seek refuge until enlightenment is attained. Through the listener, by listening to this teaching, may I become and whatever merit I may have, I may uh, attain, uh, gain, and collect. May I become a Buddha for the, for the benefit of all sentient beings through this. Oh, I thought. So, today here, as usual, annually, we are gathered here to do a Dharma discourse in this teaching courtyard. In any case, in the world, there is increasing uh, number of people taking interest in spirituality. People, especially people who have spent their life in materialistic world, find the importance of, see the importance of uh, keeping uh, faith in the spiritual traditions. Of course, uh, the theistic religious practice of keeping faith in the Creator God is uh, beneficial, but with regards to using our understanding of the uh, workings of our mind in psychology, mind and emotions, uh, we uh, may say that the Buddhism has the uh, best information on that, and I have uh, scientist friends uh, who pay attention to and take interest in learning from the teaching of the Buddha with regards to the workings of our mind and psychology. And so we, as practitioners of the teaching of the Buddha, uh, try to uh, develop um, peace of mind through uh, training the mind by making transformation within our mind. So this is a reality and also scientific. So in the land of snows, Tibet, the Buddhism that exists in the land of snows So we try to develop peace of mind through uh, the understanding of the workings of mind, the system of mind and emotions or psychology. So I have many friends who are very strong in their faith I have many of these friends, but with regards to developing a peace of mind, they usually resort to the belief in a creator God, but not using their own mind, understanding of the workings of their mind and psychology. And so with regard to this uh, 
practice of using our mind and understanding of the psychology, mind and emotions, and trying to develop peace of mind. It is Buddhism that has the best knowledge, and particularly the Nalanda tradition of the Buddhism. So today, people are taking an interest in learning about the workings of mind, the psychology, mind and emotions that is taught in Buddhism, found in Buddhism, in order to develop peace of mind within themselves. So in the West, as I usually say, people who have no faith in or believe in the religion, even them, Take it, pay attention to the teaching of the Buddha to reduce our um, mental afflictions, particularly our attachment and clinging attachment and uh, anger and hatred. These are reduced. And then uh, to counter our anger, the practice of compassion is um, pertinent. As Master Chandrakirti, in the beginning of his Madhyamaka avatar, entering into the middle way, says, so his uh, Madhyamaka Avatara uh, especially pays homage to the great compassion as being the uh, path in the beginning of the Bodhisattva uh, path leading to Buddhahood in the, in the middle when they are on the path to enlightenment and in the end, after, uh, even after becoming the, a Buddha, uh, to reap the harvest of uh, the benefit of being able to help one's self and sentient beings. And so uh, compassion is crucial in our life and in today's world when people are resorting to violence uh, harming others the practice of compassion becomes all the more pertinent <clears throat> and important today so in my daily practice i make this great compassion compassion uh, a main practice and then the unique teaching of the Buddha is emptiness. And so these two, the compassion in the sense of bodhicitta, the spirit of awakening, and <clears throat> that of the, the understanding and insight into emptiness, I make these two my main practice in my daily life. And so this gives you peace of mind as well. And this is the best means to have a long life as well. If you have peace of mind, you, uh, you will not be disturbed uh, easily by these mental afflictions, the negative emotions and negative states of mind. So, Otherwise, when you are disturbed internally by these uh, different negative emotions, negative states of mind, then even if you may do some practice for long life, it will not help because uh, the, the disturbed mental state of mind also disturbs your physical, um, I mean, disturbs you physically as well and brings, uh, causes lots of sickness. And so this practice of pe uh, developing peace of mind is the best way to have long life. Have a long life. And so here, to, to the people gathered here, 
I may say this, that the teaching of the Buddha that has come down through the Nalanda Monastic University of India to us is something that is not that does not resort only to faith, but using logic and reason, and also using the. Uh, it has this uh, understanding of the workings of our mind, the system of mind and emotions or psychology. And so, therefore, even if you may be a non-believer, but understanding the psychology or the a way our mind, mental disturbances causes us problems, by understanding that, you try to reduce these negative states of mind, negative emotions and so forth, and try to bring peace of mind within yourself. And so for even for non-believers, this uh, knowledge of the workings of our mind would be very beneficial to peace. Yeah, bring peace of mind within themselves. And so Songzen Gampo, the Dharma King, I find him to be quite uh, uh, a strong personality because though he married a Chinese princess, but when it comes to, when it, uh, comes to Buddhism, uh, in the seventh century, even then, he uh, looked for India to uh, bring Buddhism to Tibet. And then later in the 8th century, during the time of King, King Tisong Detsen, Master Shandarakshita was invited to Tibet. And therefore, we have this tradition of uh, studying the teaching of the Buddha uh, according to the Buddha's own intention and um, through the uh, tradition of Nalanda, masters like Master Nagarjun and so forth. So these texts that were written by masters like Nagarjuna and so forth, the Nalanda masters, resort to logic and reason more than faith alone. And so, by thinking through with reason and logic, then we are taught how to develop compassion to counter our negative emotions, negative states of mind. And therefore, this teaching of the Buddha that we have, of course, all religions of the world teach compassion, love and compassion, but using logic and reason to explain, uh, to emphasize the understanding of love and compassion is with us in our tradition that has come down through uh, from the Nalanda University. And so when I have discussions with people like scientists and non-believers, I find that this teaching of the Buddha that we Tibetans have emphasizes the practice of compassion. And so I do respect all religious traditions of the world, but with regard to the Nalanda tradition of Buddhism, the more in which the more you think through logic and reason, the greater conviction you gain in the teaching of the Buddha. So this teaching of the Buddha that the, we as the people of the land of snows have, that has come down, that is in the Nalanda tradition, is something which is based on logic and reason to think through the teaching. So this is a unique teaching, a tradition that we have so we, the Tibetans, have kept up, kept this teaching so far, preserved it through study, and then thinking over and over the topics that we study, and then 
the way we have uh, preserved the teaching of the Buddha is through study, the combination of study and uh, analysis, the, the meditation which comprise uh, both the analytical and the uh, placement or the uh, con single-pointed concentration. So this tradition of Buddhism that we have, we can say it's the precious treasure of the world at large. And so, so far we have preserved it well, and it is very important for us to keep up with it. So, keeping up with the teaching or preserving the teaching doesn't mean to have some temples, but through study and practice of the teaching. This is a unique teach tradition that we have. So we have kept this uh, teaching, the tradition, very well so far. And so in this world, which is uh, where there is lots of upheavals, it's very important for us to overcome, to understand that our anger, pride, and arrogance are the uh, factors that disturb our mind. And so we need to counter them and develop peace of mind within ourselves, as I said before, which is the best means for our longevity as well. And so we, the Tibetans, have this means to build peace of mind and uh, have a good health. And uh, this tradition also uh, benefits the uh, society at large for uh, to have peace in the society. And so through our peace of mind, through the practice of love and compassion, we help one another, and so we, as Tibetans, have a very good ex uh, serve as a very good example for others to have peace of mind. So, in many parts of the world, there are people who try to hurt others, harm others, cause problems to others. But this teaching of the precepts that we find in the Buddhist tradition that we have can be of great benefit to others as well, other people around the world. So we have also a very good practice or uh, tradition of um, putting them into practice, the teaching of the Buddha into practice, to serve as an example for others, other people. So even Chinese friends of ours do acknowledge that Tibetans have a very good uh, heart. We have a very uh, positive nature. So they also acknowledge this. And so we have kept up with this, preserved it so far, and still we should consider compassion very important and try to use that to, to develop peace of mind. Of course, times are changing, but peace of mind cannot change, should not be changed. We cannot falter on peace of mind. And so we should still continue to keep up with our tradition. So in the West, there is as 
as well as uh, other parts of the world, whether north or south, there are increasing number of people taking interest in our tradition, and therefore, the good morality, the civilized uh, behavior that we have as Tibetans, without having to touch on religion as such, we should try to explain our tradition to others. And this tradition and custom that we have, we should keep in mind that this tradition that we have should be used for peace of mind in, and for peace in the world. So we talk about peace, 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 but if you have love and compassion, there is peace within, and then peace in the world. Otherwise, if you are tossed by love, uh, it's tossed by attachment and anger and so forth, these negative states of mind, then there is no peace of mind. And therefore, this Tibetan tradition that we have, in which we have a civilized way of thinking, civilized uh, practice of morality and so forth, we have the responsibility to spread this message to other people in the world. You should keep this in mind. So the teaching today, so this is essentially what I wish to express. When you <clears throat> go more deeper, as it is said, by Master Nagarjuna, uh, the Buddha's teaching of the Buddha are uh, based on the two truths, which are the conventional and the ultimate. And so the two truths are explained uh, and established uh, through reason and logic by masters like Nagarjuna and his disciples, followers, and therefore, our uh, Buddhist tradition is not a blind faith at all, as the Chinese used to say. Even amongst the Chinese, there is increasing number of people taking interest in our tradition of Buddhism, and also from around the world, people take interest in it, and then... <clears throat> Uh, regarding compassion also, people uh, pay special attention to it today. And so this is part of our tradition, and therefore we should do our best to preserve this tradition and uh, <clears throat> regarding myself personally, I also make uh, bodhicitta, the spirit of awakening and the understanding insight into emptiness as my primary practice daily. And so I find it, the, this practice very beneficial for myself, for developing a peace of mind. And so I wish to urge my friends here also to make the uh, good heart, warm heartedness as your um, main practice. And as human beings, this is our responsibility as well. So please do your best to practice compassion and the wisdom.